Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. I'm Reverend Miner. I'm one of the pastors here at your church, Flores United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to the sanctuary. Some of you have not been in here very often, and we wanted to kind of show you what it was like um, before you start coming up here to worship. So this is the sanctuary space and I am standing up in what we call the altar area or the chancel area. It's just the place that we stand so that we can see all of you when we talk to you and it is in front of the cross which you'll find right up here behind me which you can see in just a minute. And there's the cross, look at that. The cross is always in the sanctuary at the center to remind us that Jesus Christ is the focal point of our worship. He's why we come every day. And our worship is all based on telling people who Jesus is and who God is and who the Holy Spirit is. One of the first things that we do in worship on Sunday morning is an acolyte. Often somebody one of your ages will come in and carry this light in. And they'll walk over to the candles that are here on our communion table and they will light them. This light in our service tells us and reminds us that Jesus Christ is present. We call this the light of Christ, and that's what the acolyte does, carries in the light of Christ, and at the end of the service, takes it out and carries it out into the world. This table that you see the candle sitting on, this is our communion table, or the Lord's table, we might call it. On some Sundays, you'll see set up here communion. That's when we eat bread and drink juice and remember how much Jesus loves us. This table is very special to us. It, is made, um, it was made just for this space, and there is wood in it that kind of tells us who we are as a church. In the corners of this, you will find wood that is from a church in Cuba. And we went to Cuba, some of our people and our people in our church have helped um, pay for and bring about a church that was built in Cuba. So this wood comes from there. The wood that is here, the different colored wood is from Sierra Leone, where we have a child rescue center for children and where we have a hospital that helps take care of people who might otherwise not get good care. And so we put that wood in there. If you keep walking over here, Underneath the pulpit, there's a special little shelf. And on this shelf, we keep a hymnal because sometimes we need to see the hymns. You can see that they're in our book, but also in the hymnal, there are words. And sometimes we have baptisms and you'll find on these pages, the words to baptism. You'll see these up on the big screens if you're sitting in the sanctuary, but you can also find them in the hymnal. That's kept under here. Another thing that kept, that's kept under here is a Bible. Um, in case we don't have the scripture printed out, we can just pull out our Bibles and read it right from this book here. The last thing that you'll find under here is a box of Kleenex, because sometimes you need Kleenex during worship, don't you? And that's the pulpit. This is where we preach the word of God from. All right, now you're getting the view that the preachers get on Sunday from this pulpit area. You can see all the chairs out here, they're empty now, but just imagine when they're all filled, everybody's come in to hear about Jesus and to learn more and to sing praises to God. You can also see up here, if you look beyond the pulpit, down past the plant, there is a monitor down there. There is a, uh, it looks like a big TV. Those, those monitors have words on it. Um, they'll have the words of the hymns and they'll have the prayers on it. And they can even tell us a special message if there's an emergency. But those words on there are the same words that you would see on the big screens here. What you see right now is our baptismal font. And you might wonder why I'm holding a pitcher of water. Well, we know as Christians that water is really important to us. When Jesus was first baptized by John the Baptist, he was baptized down in the water of the Jordan River. When we baptize people now, we take water and we pour it into the baptismal font. Hmm, really splattered. And then we say a prayer over the water because when we baptize people, we want them to know that they are now God's child. We baptize infants and we baptize adults and everybody in between. And it is just a way, it's an outward sign 
of recognizing that we're inwardly claimed by God. This is our piano. You can hear it, right? Music is so important in the church. We are asked in the Bible over and over again to sing our praises to God. You'll read psalms that tell us to sing praise, make a joyful noise before the Lord um, with songs and with instruments. This is one of those instruments that we use, and this helps lead the congregation in singing. Sometimes Unbin sits here. Unbin is our accompanist. She might sit here. She might sit over at the organ that's over there as well, and she will lead worship in that way. Yun Nam, our music director, does that as well. And now um, Megan Gumabe is our new contemporary music person, and she'll use this piano. Um, sometimes you might see a whole band set up here with drums and guitars, and they'll lead music in that way too. We have lots of singers that sing as well, and they sing in choirs. A lot of you are in our children's choir and you lead us in worship. <clears throat> All those chairs behind me are the choir loft, and that's where the adults sit when they, and stand when they lead us in worship on Sundays. So one other area of music I wanted to share with you is our bell tables. Those tables are empty right now, but on Sundays you'll see all sorts of bells on them and they will play music that will help worship God as well. There's bells and then there's chimes, and I know some of you play both of those, but this is another important part of our Sunday morning worship experience. All right, so now you're in a place that a lot of people don't ever come into. This is called the sacristy. Not really sure why it's called the sacristy, but it's the place where we prepare things that we use in worship on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. So it's a room, there's uh, sliding doors, you can't really see it from the sanctuary when you're sitting out there, but here is where we prepare things. And one of the things that we prepare are candles. On Sunday night, we have these. You can see there's lots of candles, and we put those on tables, and people can come by and light a candle and say a prayer for someone that they love. We also have the tall candles that you saw me light at the very beginning. Those are filled in here as well, and, and we have a couple sets so we never run out. And then in here, this is a freezer, and you might say, why on earth do you have a freezer in the sacristy? We have a freezer, so we have lots and lots of bread. And I bet you know what we use bread for, right? That's right, we use it for communion. This is our communion bread, it's called King's Hawaiian. It's really good, and you can buy this at your grocery store. This is what we use, and we have so many loaves because so many people come and receive communion here at Flores. Over here is our sink. The water you saw me pour into the baptismal font comes from here. If I open up these cupboards, this is where we keep the plates and the cups that we use for communion. And we'll prepare all of that here. We have special people called communion stewards that come in and do this for us each week and um, any, time, any special time we have communion as well. But that's, that's where this is kept. There's also other supplies kept in here. You can see down here, this is what we wash our hands with on communion Sunday. There's more plates. Up here we have cups, because sometimes the pastors get thirsty or they cough and they need a glass of water on the pulpit. Um, and then in the refrigerator, we keep some more bread and we keep the grape juice, and you remember what we use that for. That's for communion as well. Here we have a stand and a Bible. And sometimes we put this on the communion table out front, on the Lord's table. Sometimes we use the cross as well. All of these things are things that remind us who we are and what we're doing, and that everything is focused on God. And this is what instructs our worship. So boys and girls, that's kind of the end of your little tour today. I hope you come up and you spend some time in worship up here. I know during the month of July, we have special Sundays and sermons that are gonna be just for you all. Um, hopefully ways that will help you understand what it means to be a Christian and what it means to worship God up here. So at the end of our services every week, an acolyte comes forward and they light their stick from the light that is on the altar and they put out the candles. And then they turn around and they carry the light of Christ out into the world because that's really what we're all about. We come together as the community of Christ to learn about Jesus so that we can go out into the world and share his love with everybody that we meet.
So a really good question that somebody asked me was, sometimes the pastors wear robes and sometimes they don't. And why and when and how does that happen? Well, we wear robes for the traditional worship services on communion Sundays and on Sundays when we do baptisms. And maybe another special Sunday, Confirmation Sunday, we wore robes. But we only do that during the traditional service because that is something that is an older tradition. Interestingly, pastors started wearing robes in order to cover up old clothes um, because pastors used to be so poor that they really couldn't afford to have a nice looking suit for every Sunday. And so they just had a black robe and they could wear that every week and look just fine. 